You're probably wondering, if bond prices decline in a rising rate environment, how do I invest without simply buying more stocks? How do we think about diversification and portfolio stability in a rising rate environment? Most investors are not fully allocated to the stock market due to its volatility. Historically, bonds have provided stability while generating income and modest returns. However, in rising rate environments, bond prices decline. So while they might decline more slowly, they're still losing money. Thus, we must move beyond stocks and bonds in building portfolios. Institutions have been doing this for years, while maybe newer to individual investors and families, it's not new to professional investors. So how do we take, how do we learn from institutional investors and consider these things for our own portfolios? What assets, what assets are out there to choose from? Let's start with real estate. Rents tend to trend up with inflation, which drives asset values higher. Residential real estate continues to be underbuilt and even though prices have risen, we have several more years of building before millennial demand will be fully met. If you look at the chart of housing starts on the left hand side, you can see that coming out of the financial crisis in the early 2000s, home building in particular was at historically low levels and we've been underbuilding and underbuilding and underbuilding the national average for over a decade. And so it's going to take several years of being over the average in order for in order for the supply to catch up to the demand in the marketplace. Selecting the right investment vehicle is key in real estate as many REITs are overweight to office space, which may continue to struggle in the post pandemic world. Other assets like warehouses, data centers, apartments and even single family homes may make more sense than office space. Additionally, opportunities in farmland, timber and other undeveloped land assets are less subject to correlation with urban office markets and stocks. Infrastructure companies like oil and gas pipelines and mobile data, data towers provide core services that are utilized regardless of the economic cycle or the rate environment. They can help provide stability across market cycles for portfolios. Additionally, many of these firms are structured to pay out most of their earnings and income on a quarterly or annual basis. Finally, commodities like industrial metals, energy, and gold hedge inflation and provide diversification. It's possible to lose money when rolling over commodity contracts so choosing the right approach to investing in commodities is crucial. In general, that's our key takeaway in this space. When we're looking for portfolio stability, choosing the right investment vehicle, funds, ETFs, derivatives, is key to providing the expected diversification in many asset classes. Real estate is often highly levered. Investors use debt, which may increase the risk. A lot of real asset funds in the infrastructure space actually have return profiles that are really similar to the S&P 500, so they're not diversifiers. So being selective in thinking about alternative assets that move beyond stocks and bonds is really important, and it may be worth some professional guidance for your portfolio. So stocks and bonds are boring. What about crypto? Is it cryptocurrency a diversifier? We don't manage cryptocurrency in our portfolios, but we know the topic is top of mind for investors. Bitcoin and Ethereum have grown tremendously throughout 2020. Regardless of your view of whether they're going to continue to increase in value or decline, all investors in cryptocurrencies need to understand two critical things. First, they're a form of currency and that they're simply worth what another person is going to pay. They don't have those underlying cash flows that we've talked so much about. If you own it for forever, at the end of the ownership period, you don't get anything. You're only going to get what someone else is going to pay. Second, the volatility is significantly more than the stock market and your risk tolerance should be part of your decision on whether to invest in the asset class or not. Cryptocurrency makes the stock market look like a gentle roll in the park. If you look at the chart, you'll see Ethereum at the top and Bitcoin, two of the most popular cryptocurrencies in the red and the green lines. And then you see the S&P 500 over the last 12 months in the yellow line. That yellow line looks really stable compared to what's happened in the cryptocurrency markets where you see extreme uh, price appreciation, but you also see um, almost 50% declines in some months um, before subsequent increases in the price. And so taking um, note of the volatility is really important uh, for investors going forward. 